All right, everyone. Well, we're going to do a recap of what has been the worst day of the week. The worst day of the week, and it's a Friday. That's never fun. So what happened today? Well, this morning, when I first sat down a little after 7, I noticed their leading gappers were RWOD and ZCMD. These were the uh, the two leading gappers. Right now, you can see they're both up 50%. Um, Arwood was up quite a lot. If we look at the chart on this, this thing went up big time after hours yesterday. It's, uh, no, sorry. Uh, it was pre-market. Pre-market this morning at 4 a.m., it squeezes from like, you know, $7 yesterday all the way up to 20 bucks. It pulls back and then goes up to $30 a share. That is an incredible move. But it gave it all back. It was a head and shoulders pattern almost perfectly. So we would say that's the shoulder, that's the head, that's the shoulder, and it came back down. Now, it did curl back up pre-market. But I, you know, unfortunately, this just was not trustworthy. At best, what were you going to get? A little bounce off the low. Now, if it had, if it had broken above volume weight average price and proven it could hold over that level, well, then we've got something to work with. But it couldn't. And and even if it did break over VWAP, to be honest, it still is dealing with the fact that we had this head and shoulders pattern. So RWOD. This was a special acquisition company, a SPAC, special purpose acquisition company, uh, was trading sideways at $10 more or less. And then they had the news of the merger. So the merger news is what brought out, uh, that was the catalyst that brought the volume in and created the volatility and the, and the move, but obviously it didn't hold up all that well. Okay, so that was our leading gapper and still is today. Second, Z, and I have no trades on this. So didn't like that one, no trades. Second leading gapper, ZZ, sorry, ZCMD. This one, you, you know what I'm going to say about it. It's thickly traded. The move started after hours here. It pulls back and it hasn't been able to get back to those after hour highs. So ultimately for me, I mean, I was watching it as it had this resistance around three, but I wasn't ready to buy this break because it was so thickly traded. I didn't expect it was going to make a big move. And we still, in my opinion, need to get over those pre-market highs to really look interesting or after hour highs. And we weren't able to do that. So this one was a no. I said, I, I don't like it. It doesn't look good. Third leading gapper is NVFY. Now, NVFY hit our scanners at the open. So there were no trades on it, no opportunities pre-market, but at the open, it kind of punched higher here. What's the catalyst? There's none. There's no catalyst. So it squeezed up here on 100,000 shares of volume. Basically, what probably happened is, you know, some trader out there bought like 20,000 shares and it spiked up on this candle. And then some people were like, oh, wait, this thing's moving. Uh, maybe someone knows something. I'm going to get in. And then people start buying it and then it drops and then some people buy the dips. And next thing you know, it's getting volume and it sort of is have it has a life of its own, but it doesn't have a clear catalyst. The daily chart is fine. It's over the 200. You know, it's I guess a stock that's made a big move in the past. The float is very low, but the spreads are kind of big. The volume's light. It doesn't have a catalyst. That seems risky. No trades on that. Next one down, AGBA. Well, wait a second. They basically put out the same exact news this morning that they put out yesterday. So same headline, and it goes up a little bit more, but it didn't really hold up super well yesterday. It rejected and came down. So what do we expect is going to happen today? Reject and come back down, most likely. So no interest in that one for me. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen my um, recent episode here on short selling, but that may be one uh, for you to take a um, take a peek at if you haven't watched it already. I've also got this episode right here on um, taxes, how traders legally pay zero in taxes. A couple of recent uploads from the week. Anyway, so I'll put those there. All right. So um, so anyways, AGBA, although I could short it coming back down, um, this one just is too cheap and it's not something I'm interested in touching. Okay, so that's a no. Well, geez, Louise. Uh, we've already gone through the top four gaps. Uh, all right, let's look at, well, MRT. We'll look at that quickly. Gap number five just took first place. Moving up, but again, no catalyst. There's no news. There's no reason for it to be moving up. I don't trust it. It's also got the 200 moving average nearby. And now we have WISA. 
So what do we say about this one? This is actually the stock on Wednesday that I was up $10,000 on. Now, I wasn't able to keep it all in my pocket, but uh, I did have a nice day on it on Wednesday, which was day two continuation. Day one Tuesday was nice too. Yesterday, it was dead. Today, it's kind of bouncing up a little bit. And yet, it's not that easy to trade. So let's get dialed in here. We'll look at the 10 second chart. So pre-market, I don't know how many traders are really paying attention to this. I mean, if we look, if we go back, we don't have to look at the 10 second to do that. We'll look at the five minute chart here. Um, we peaked on uh, Wednesday morning. We pulled back, we closed and after hours had a high double top. Uh, and then we sort of pulled back. So Thursday was a selling day. And here went uh, Friday kind of back down here. And when it started to pop up, the first thing I thought was, well, you know, you've got the 200 moving average here, this purple line. So we're probably gonna have a little bit of resistance around that level. Uh, surprisingly, it kind of just blasted through that didn't really stop there. Pretty much uh, what it did was right at the open, it started to squeeze up. And it does this little red to green, it goes up to 610, pulls back up to 620 pulls back, punches to 647, drops to 610, 620, goes back up to 647, pulls back, busts through to 660, pulls back, punches through to 690, pulls back quite a bit down here, almost to 650, punches up higher. So look at these candles, it's like one punch higher, one punch higher, and then it's this hesitation, and the spreads are bigger. So we just dropped, we popped up. I was tempted to punch it. Uh, well, I was tempted to punch it right here at 620. And I was like, I don't know, the spreads are kind of big. I just think it's too risky. It goes up to 647. And I was like, wait, wait, don't just chase it. It comes up here. And I thought, I don't know. So I pretended like I was like, all right, let's let's say I just took that trade. And it goes up to 660. Uh, but it's only like 651 on the bid. I'm like, realistically, I'm up four cents a share on 2500 shares. It's like 100 bucks. And then it flushes here down to 42, which is I would have stopped out. I would have gone red on it by 100. Then it comes back up and punches through 60 and goes higher. So the moral of the story today is that this is the worst day of the week because it's a no trade day. But this is actually a good day. It's good because this was a day where I exercised that muscle of discipline. I maintained composure. I said, I don't like the leading gapper. I don't like the second leading gapper. I don't like the third leading or the fourth leading or the fifth leading or the sixth leading. And WISA was the one that tempted me the most. But what I said to myself is, it's a bounce day. How much is it really going to bounce? And the relative volume. Now, this is an important metric. Look at the relative volume. It's very low. So one of the things that you may know about my trading is that I make about 90% of my profit on stocks that have five times higher relative volume today than their average. Now, WISA right now is at a relative volume of 1.27. Why? Because I had such high volume in these past days. It, it's 200 million shares of volume. This is insane. It's huge volume. So the volume today being only 6 million shares is very low relative to what's normal for that stock. So the spreads are bigger, it's a little choppier, and we are seeing some flushes where traders are marketing in and out with bigger orders. So the relative volume is low. And how much is it up today? 19%? Is it the leading gap or no? Is it the most obvious stock? No, it's not. The most obvious stocks today and on any given day are the, the stocks that are the biggest percentage gainers. But unfortunately today, both of these were, in my opinion, not worth trading. R Wood was just selling off, not clean. And ZCMD, it was just too cheap. It's a grinder, too thickly traded. It's just not what I it's just not what I'm looking for. And I, I know what I'm looking for. Now the problem is it's very, very easy for me to say, I know what I'm looking for. And even though I don't see it, WISA is the best of what's around today. So I'll just trade that. Right? It's it's like grading the class on a curve. Well, you know, the best grade was an 85, so that becomes 100 and then everything. But that doesn't work with trading. This is this was at best a, it's a, I'd say it's a B, I would say continuation can never really be an A quality setup um, because first day is always the best for me. 
It's always that's always the best. Now, if I miss day one uh, and it continues into day two, I'll trade day two. But but at best, it's a B quality setup because it's a continuation. We could even say it's C because that makes more sense. A C quality setup because C continuation. It's easy to remember. Uh, but it's it's probably better than a, a C. In any case, regardless, and unfortunately, realistically, has very limited potential. The big move already happened. Now you've got bag holders who are going to sell into these levels. You have people who are going to short against the highs. These days are never as clean. And if you start trading B and C quality setups, well, what typically happens is your accuracy declines because these are setups that don't have as high of a likelihood of resolving in your favor. Now, in a really hot market, a B or C quality setup can actually trade better. And that's fine. So, you know, it's it's interesting because in a really hot market, almost anything moving gets extra momentum because of the strength of the market. And so I'm just going to be more aggressive across the board. But in a cold market, trading the best of what's here ends up typically being a recipe for taking unnecessary losses. And to lose on a Friday, you know, you always feel a little bummed out going into the weekend carrying a loss. And there's nothing you could do about it until Monday morning. So what I'm going to do here is say, you know what? This is a no trade day. This was an opportunity for me to exercise that muscle of discipline, which I've been working so hard to build. I was tempted on WISA, but here was what I said. As you know, I have right now a 5,000 share max position size until I make my first $1,000 of profit. Once I'm up over $1,000, I take that cap off. So, And I know that my window really is between about 7 a.m. and 10 to 11 a.m. And today I have a hard stop because I have a meeting coming up here. So I knew that I wasn't going to be able to trade as long today. And I thought if I dig myself a hole, a hole <clears throat> excuse me, a hole here at 945, I'm not going to have a lot of time to recoup those losses. And, you know, I'm kind of just running out of time here. And the most I could take is 5,000 shares, which I wouldn't trust even on, on this. So 2,500 shares, how much am I really going to make? $150, $200? Is it really worth it? And I was able to talk myself out of the trade pretty quickly. Now, I am being a bit more, um, I suppose, risk adverse right now than maybe um, at other times. Part of that is because I did have a drawdown in March, and I'm grateful that I was able to recover that relatively quickly. And I don't want to go into another drawdown because it, it's not fun. You guys who have been through that, you know what it's like. So I'm being a little bit more disciplined right now, just trying to lock up consistent base hits and not take unnecessary risk. Now, that does mean I miss out on what could be profit. I could have made money on WISA, you know, it obviously made a, a nice move. But if I was in the mindset of taking a lot of trades, I might have also taken trades on INDO and lost. I might have also taken a stab at BPTH, which hit the scanner on a bounce day, could have lost on that. I might have taken a trade on NV, uh, NVFY, and I could have lost on that one too. So, you know, out of the four or five that popped up, really, WIS is the only one that's held up. And it, it kind of makes sense because it was so strong on Wednesday morning. You know, I can understand why traders, maybe who are bored because nothing else is moving, would jump on this a little faster. And maybe it does go higher today. And maybe when more volume comes in, it becomes a little safer. But also, you know, it is Friday. It doesn't have a fresh catalyst. You always have the the risk of offerings and stuff like that as you get further into a move. So I think the safe thing is to just call it a day and wait for something else. Now, again, that's about being safe. It's about being conservative. It's about protecting from downside loss. Uh, but my job is first and foremost to manage risk. And if I'm going to take a trade, knowing every trade carries risk, I have to have a firm belief that I have the potential to have a nice profit. And right now, the profit loss ratio just doesn't feel in my favor today. It's the end of the week. We don't have anything that has a really strong news. And someone asked this earlier uh, in, in the chat room about this. And what I said is that typically companies are not going to put out really, really great news on a Friday because they, you know, They'll put out bad news on Fridays and hope people have forgotten about it by Monday or Tuesday morning, right? So companies are more likely to put out good news early in the week when the market has a few days to kind of get behind, you know, the stock and buy it up based on the news. That's just a cycle. And it makes it makes sense why companies would do that. So, you know, 
you you put out bad news on a Friday and you hope that people cool off and forget about it and by Monday morning you don't have too much damage. So anyways, it's just we call Fridays sometimes a wild card day because if you get something that starts moving because of a lack of anything else, people will sometimes jump on it a little bit faster, a little more aggressively because of boredom ultimately. And that's not necessarily a sign of good self-restraint or um, good discipline, but it is human nature. So, and I fall victim to it as well. But anyways, today I'm managing my risk and I'm just thinking to myself, if there was a day to take a lot of risk, is today the day? And I think the answer is no. So that's it for me. I will uh, lock it up here. And again, those of you guys who haven't uh, checked out a couple of those recent uploads on YouTube uh, here, make sure you check them out. We've got the new one on short selling, the new one on um, how I trade tax-free, which is very interesting, I'm sure for many of you. So check that out. And we'll be back at it first thing on Monday morning. I'll be live streaming for my Warrior Pro members. And I want to thank you guys, um, as always, who hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll remind you that trading is risky. My results aren't typical, so manage your risk, take it slow, and I'll see you back here on Monday morning.